Welcome to the new show of Dick in the Box, where every box is left up to interpretation, because we're all dicks. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the next episode of Dick in the Box. It's your boy, Ian L. Haddock. Welcome into the motherfucking room. Um, hopefully, y'all have been great. I know it's been a while. You know, I've slowed down on my drinking, child. So, we'll see how this goes because I've slowed down on my drinking. I'm having a little bit. Just a little light light because the bitch is nervous. Why am I nervous? Because today I'm recording by myself. Um, I realized I have I've had everybody else on uh, the couch except for my motherfucking self, and so today I have invited myself to the motherfucking couch. Welcome on in, Ian Haddock. <laughs> well, anyway, child. Hopefully, y'all are excited to hear what's going on. Since we've been gone, it's been a couple things happening. Um, with me, not much, actually. I've been, like, super quiet, super super boring, actually. I'm looking for some excitement, child. Uh, but, but things have been going um, pretty good. I've been working on some things. Uh, last week, I released uh, with my friend Daniel J. Downer. Uh, we're doing a Broken Girls Tour. We're going to talk more about that in the future, but be looking out for that information. Um, something else that I read, child, Houston is getting an in and out burger. I absolutely think those motherfuckers are disgusting, but it's really hard for me to, like, really be moved by, um, by a burger place, first of all, especially, like, a burger chain. Why? Because I eat burgers plain. Okay, burger chain, burger plain. Um, and so I'm not really moved by burger places, especially nasty ass in and out. Um, I don't really like many of the fucking burger chains that come down to uh, Houston regularly. I'm not a fan of Carl's Jr. I'm not a fr- fan of in and out. If y'all are from Houston or if y'all plan on visiting Houston, there's this place called Big Belly now. Granted, the burgers are, like, huge, and sometimes, I think they're, like, too huge sometimes, Uh, but, I mean, they are amazing. That's the motherfucking burger. And let me tell you why I'm an expert on burgers. First of all, I'm fat. (laughs) Okay. Uh, But above that, also, no, no real talk, because I don't eat much on a burger, so that means, like, the meat has to be good. I mean, anybody could get really fresh lettuce and tomatoes child oh somebody else that got a good burger uh bex prime obviously a bitch is hungry but you know we're getting the in and out so y'all check that out also friend to the show latavia hey latavia and hopefully soon to be friend to the show beyonce <laughs> um she um they took a picture together um they've reunited after 18 years so we're really excited about that um, we don't necessarily know what's going on with that. I'm sure when Ryan, um, my lovely co-host comes back, he'll talk to us a little bit more, um, about what that may or may not mean. Um, because if, I mean, he doesn't really talk about it much, but he is Latavia's, uh, manager. So I'm sure he may know something about that or not. But we shall hear more about that. We did see the picture. So we've seen pictures with with um, with Beyonce and everybody, including her luggage. Uh, so I guess fair as a no. Um, but it's kind of dope. It's kind of dope. I will say I would be so down for a DC, what is that, five reunion. Um, I would even be down. No shade. I love Michelle. 
I love Michelle. She's such a, I mean, her spirit is so pure. Um, I also, you know, I love, I love Latavia, but you know, if, if Kelly, Latoya and, um, and Beyonce want to get back together and Latavia, cause Latavia really is like a dancer and actor bitch. And she get together and put all, all the, uh, the videos together. I'm not mad about that either, but I would definitely be down for a DC five reunion hashtag DC five fucking reunion. Um, and also another, um, social media celebrity, Joshua Dominique got proposed to at one of the concerts here in Houston. Uh, we had two nights and child it had, uh, last time I checked, it was well over 1 million views and the girls were reading. Uh, I plan on hopefully talking about marriage and what that looks like, but the girls were reading because he got proposed to like at the concert, not in the concert, but like in the arena outside the concert. And they were saying like he be in the children inbox saying, hey, big head or something like that. Why is y'all mad that the people is getting married? You know what I'm saying? Um, monogamy is few and far in between in our, um, in our community in the first place. Not to say that people need to be monogamous or not. I'm just saying like it's few and far in between marriage commitment is few and far in between uh in our community so why are the girls so mad like just let that lady be happy to you joshua dominique um i've ran into him a couple times he is so freaking cool i hate you got all this backlash but i mean you know more marriage more problems i guess (laughs) uh so yeah um we're happy for all of that um, and so, yeah, my box chatter is going to be quite short. It's not a lot of banter when it's just you talking to yourself. But I kind of like this. This is kind of cute. I don't know. I don't know. I may do this a little bit more often. Um, let me take me a little sip real quick. Mm. It's tasty. Tasty. I'm going a little slower <clears throat> on this alcohol, child. If you know me, you know I love my tequila, but alcohol, I didn't turn 30, child, and I don't know. She didn't just done something totally different with my body. I can't be fucking with this alcohol like that. I think my aunt then cursed me, but that's another story for another day. My aunt told me the other day, child, not to be drinking, not to be drinking so much. She's scared I'm going to be an alcoholic. I ain't no alcoholic. I'm a social drinker, but that's what all alcoholics and drug addicts say, I guess. So anyway... Our topic, our topic tonight, there has been a social media frenzy over this topic and I felt um, especially compelled because some of my really close friends have shared some of their really personal stories that in some of them I didn't even know Um, and I was wondering, I'm like, damn, we're not even talking about this because I never talked about my story Um, I've never heard their story, and I just think it's such a powerful topic. Hashtag why I didn't report. So I'm going to read verbatim this article so we can be caught up and we can understand what this is. So this is from Al Jazeera. It says sexual assault survivors are taking to Twitter to share their challenges and reporting abuse after U.S. President Donald Trump Question Christine Blasey Ford's allegation against Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. I was afraid nobody would believe me and I was ashamed. Were among the reasons why thousands used why I didn't report. Said they did not go to authorities at the time of an assault. The hashtag trended on Thursday morning after Trump tweeted. I have no doubt that if the attack on Dr. Ford was as bad as she says, charges would have been immediately filed with local law enforcement by either her or or loving parents. Trump's tweet came about a week after reports surfaced that Kavanaugh was accused of sexually assaulting a woman in the 1980s. According to Ford, whose identity was unknown until Sunday, Kavanaugh groped her and tried to take off her clothes at a party when they were teenagers. Kavanaugh has repeatedly denied the allegations. Um, That's just the very beginning of the report. It goes on and on. But it's a really good topic. Excuse me. So I want to have a little talk about hashtag why I didn't report. 
Before I start, I want to preface this conversation because a lot of times these conversations can leave a lot of uh, mixed emotions and mixed conclusions, okay? So I do want to preface this conversation with a couple things. Predator behavior is not indicative of sexuality, okay? Obviously, as a gay man, I'm either going to talk about a straight woman or another man who potentially touched me or touched somebody I know or me touching somebody, right? That does not indicate sexuality. Being a molester, being a predator does not indicate sexuality. People do that because they have a low moral compass, right? No ethics and personal issues. It's generally a mental health issue, right? So please understand that predator Molester behavior is not indicative of sexuality. They are not congruent with sexuality. You are not, um, you are not made gay because you had a predator as a man, right? Um, you are not um, gay because you like little boys. That's a moral issue, okay? I want to preface that because I want us to be really clear about that. And the second thing is to just reinforce whether I was on the receiving or the giving end of um, assault, right? Which I will talk about pretty in depth. That is not an explanation why I'm gay. Why? Because I just fucking said predator and molester behavior is not indicative of sexuality. Okay? Don't read me. Read a fucking book. Okay? That's it. So now that we understand the hashtag origination, um, I want to talk about for a moment why it's important for me to talk about this. So I have the unfortunate um, position of being on both sides um, as a young man. Um, A lot of people will talk about boys being boys. Um, I've talked about coercing uh, young boys my age to have, um, intercourse, but, um, and, and I think that because a lot of people do it, like we think it's okay, but it's a different in coercing and talking boys into something and mind fucking someone to feel comfortable doing what they are uncomfortable with doing. Right. How do I know that? Because I have been on both ends. Uh, there was this young boy, uh, that I speak about, um, quite often, um, I met him when I was young. We were right around the same age, maybe a couple years difference. And um, we played around. Uh, he was my first penetrative experience uh, on, you know, on the giving in. Like, I, I, I fucked him, okay? Um, and um, I coerced him. Like, I mean, I talked him into it. We were young. I talked and talked and talked and... He finally let me do it. And um, he was in pain. He was in pain. And people will say, well, I mean, you know, you just talk trade into fucking. You talk trade into fucking. Well, the same young man hit me up and he's still fucked up by it. Um, just by his conversations. Like he still wants uh, sex, but he, you know, he's married, has kids. And the reason why he wants it, um, well, he, he wants it with his words, a she-male. He wants me in a she-male. And uh, he hit me up and asked me to do it with him. And I was really hurt because the fact that now he needs all these different fetishes, not that trans women are fetishes, but the way he was talking, uh, the trans woman is a fetish to make him feel comfortable in the type of sex he wants to have really shows that there was some damage and some trauma um, as a young man that I gave to this man. And it made me reflect over um, this guy that I messed with that was in the same grade as me. Uh, Me and him had messed around once or twice when I was um, in high school. He went to my church. We would sleep around in the usher's room. Yes, I was fucking in the church. Not necessarily happy about that, but I mean, it was what it was. I can't change it. I was sucking dick in the church. Hashtag sucking dick in the church. And um, anyway, 
when I was in 12th grade, he took me and he was taking me, my best friend, and me and my best friend's fuck buddy home. Yes, in 12th grade, me and my best friend had a fuck buddy. It was a small town. We was running the train on the same boy. We was cool with Sharon. I ain't cool with Sharon now, but we was cool with sharing some ass, child. And um, this one particular guy who I had messed with before had took us to um, the little waterfront. We call it the dike. It's the Texas City dike. And pretty much told us like we wasn't leaving off there if we didn't perform sexual acts for him. Now, granted, me and him had willingly uh, played around in the past, but we weren't willingly playing around at that point. So um, it it was scary because this is a big old nigga. I mean, I wasn't a, I wasn't always this thick, voluptuous, and fine. I was a little bitty thing, you know, with no money. And he was taking us home from the football game, and I was scared, so I started screaming like a little bitch. <laughs> he had put us in that car so motherfucking quick, and took us home. And crazy enough, we never spoke again. So. This topic is really <clears throat> close to my heart because I've been on both sides, even as a kid, multiple, multiple times in different situations um, where I was forced or coerced into situations where I, wasn't un- where I was uncomfortable or I did the same to other people. And I'm able to, because I'm such an empath, unfortunately, when I do fucked up shit, I get to see it play out in front of me. So... That's what happened. Um, But I did want to talk about, you know, an actual situation on my hashtag why I didn't report story. Let me take another drink, Chell. So, hashtag why I didn't report it. Um, I didn't report it because prostitutes are nothing. Yeah. That's why I didn't report it. Mine happened probably in 2010. I had asked God to get me out of sex work, child, because I wasn't making no money, you know, as cute and, you know, fine at the time as I was. I wasn't really making enough money to survive. I had lost the relationship from, you know, somebody I thought I would never be able to get over, over prostituting and hoeing. And um, I just wanted to get out. I was evicted from my apartment and I was staying on a couch of someone who had paid me for sex prior and pretty much was like, either you going to put out are you going to give me money to live here? And so, although I had prayed and asked God to pretty much take it from me, take prostitution from me, I needed to move. And something about sex work, like all addictions, and yes, I am correlating sex work to addictions sometimes, um, you feel like you can't get out. Um, you feel like there is no other way. And all I could think of was I'm, I can put out on this man's couch and live with him by fucking him. Or I could have my own place by fucking someone else to get a movie in special. Right. And so I had got on Adam for Adam, put up my ad and this guy hits me up. So the guy hits me up and he's like, you know, you know, what's uh, no, let me go back. I had been up all night waiting for it because I'm like, God, I know. Yes, I talked to God like this. I, I was having a whole conversation with God. Like, God, just give me a good lick and then I'll leave it alone. I'll go find me a job. Just let me get out this man's house off his couch. And um, I went to sleep probably about 5.15 at the computer screen because I was just waiting on it. I'm just waiting on it. Counting on it. That's how delirious you can you can be and 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 desperate in those situations. And so I'm like, please let somebody hear it. I go to sleep by 5:15. I wake up no later than 7 a.m. It's 5:15 a.m. I wake up no later than 7 a.m. Clicking back that refresh button on A for A. 
And here goes a message. Hey, how are you? I respond like, bitch, I'm fine. What's good? So he responds probably 30 minutes later. I got $500 for you to come over here and fuck me. I'm like, yes, ma'am, bitch. This is exactly what I need. But the bad part was I didn't realize I had fell asleep again. It's like nine in the morning. (laughs) So I sent him a message at nine in the morning like, what's good? Let me come through. He like, I'm already at work. I'm like, fuck, fuck. So he sends me another message. Why is such a good guy like you on a website like this? And I said, look, my love. I am not here for your banter regarding me and my, you know, my career, (laughs) what I do for a living. I'm here to make money, you know, because when you're that desperate, bitch, you don't want to talk about nothing but the coin. Okay. Um, And anyway, he was like, no, I'm just saying I can get you a job. And I looked up to the heavens. I said, God, this must be you. Can somebody whisper something in their in they friends? Yeah, text your friends and say, just because it looks easy don't mean God sent it. Can you? Can we say that? Because my bitch ass really had thought, God has sent me a lifeline. So the man tell me that there's going to be a Nabisco factory coming down to Houston and that he is one of the directors. He tells me, I can get you a job. Now, granted, I do really well now. But back then, I had never had like a real, real job. Like I had had part-time retail jobs and things like that, call center jobs. But this man had told me, I'll never forget this amount. He said they was going to pay me $16.52. And I was excited about that $16.52. And I said, so how do I get on? I had I had said, fuck the $500. Let me just get a job because my job is the way out. I didn't ask God for a way out. He giving me a way out. So a bitch was super excited. So he tells me, and I know y'all probably going to look at <laughs> your goddamn phone, look at your earphones and be like, bitch, Ian, you stupid. Remember, this is like eight years ago. I've grown a lot, but he told me, I had to come to Lafayette, Louisiana to do the orientation. I said, when? He said, you need to be here by 8 o'clock in the morning. Mind you, I ain't had no motherfucking car. I ain't had no motherfucking car. But I called my friend. I said, can you drive me or can I use your car to go all the way to Lafayette? He said... Bitch, how? I borrowed money from here, borrowed money from there. And the man told me, please don't come with anybody. That's what he told me. And I said, why? And he said, because we're going to have you rooming with somebody else that's on their way down here to start. And so there won't be no space for anybody else to sleep. I said, okay, cool. So I get there. We, uh... I actually went with my boo thing right right, right at that time. I was with somebody. And he had rolled with me. And we was just going to figure this shit out, you know. Um, because something in my mind just was not comfortable. And so my boo thing sat in the car. I got there. Um, the supervisor, who I had been chatting back and forth with, uh, meets me at the front, lets me in the room, and he tells me, that my roommate will be in a little bit later. I'm like, okay, cool. So we sitting there talking. We doing the I nine form. We doing. Um, I give him my social, my ID. Like we doing everything. We doing all of the legit forms on like how to get this motherfucking job. And so then he was like, while we wait on your friend, do you want some food or anything? Um, I was trying to wait on him before I got the food, and I was like. Honestly, no. And he was like, you look nervous. Do you want drink? You want something to drink? And I was like, actually, yeah. <laughs> As I drink my tequila. Actually, yeah. So we went and got some, we went and got some gin 
from the little corner store because you know in Louisiana you can go to the corner store and get you some gin, you know? So we drank the gin or whatever. We go back to the La Quinta that I'm standing in. My boo thing still sitting in the car because he don't want nobody in there. And so we sit down, we talking, and then he asked me, he said, are you openly gay? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, you know, you can't be openly gay in um, the plant. And I'm like, er? He was like, yeah, you know, it's a masculine job. He said, did, and then he asked, did you bring anybody with you? And I said, yeah, I brought somebody with me, um, but he going to stay with his friend. And he was like, oh, I told you not to bring nobody with you. And I was like, yeah, but it was a long drive. I didn't feel comfortable driving by myself. I've never driven this far by myself. And he was like, okay, okay, well, this is what we got to do because I don't want you getting in no trouble. What I need you to do is I'm going to let him stay in the room with you. But if I call you, if I call you and, and say anybody coming, I'm going to switch your roommate out. If I call you and I tell you anybody coming, I need him to hide or I need you to jump your ass up and get out of here, okay? Because I don't want you getting in no trouble. Now, me telling you this right now, I'm like, this shit don't even make no motherfucking sense. But, bitch, I was thinking about that $16.52, okay? And I wanted that coin. I wanted to get off this man's motherfucking couch. And I was just, you know, I was uncomfortable. So, it made sense. So, my dude at the time comes in. We lay down. We go to sleep. 2.23 in the morning. I look over. My phone is going off. Like, brr, brr, brr. Because it's on vibrate. And, um, pick up the phone. He's like, I've been calling you. I've been calling you. Somebody coming. Somebody coming. Get out the, come out the hotel uh, because they're going to come and get you because something was wrong with your I-9 form. And I'm like, okay. So I jump up, brush my teeth, run out the what's the name. I'm feeling like I'm on, you know, like online for something. You know, it felt like I was online for a fraternity or some shit. So I go outside. He picks me up and he was like, we're going to go by my house and we're just going to send it out from my house so they can have it in the morning. And I was like, okay, cool. We get to his house. He pins me down immediately. We get to his house. We get to his living room. He pins me down on the couch and say, I'm going to fuck the shit out of you. And I said, no, the fuck you not. You know, I'm the trade. Feeling like the trade. No, the fuck you not. He was like, yes, the fuck I am. And I was like, dude, you better move. So I'm like talking loud. He was like, shut up. My neighbor's going to hear you. Shut up. My neighbor's going to hear you. And um, he like reaches to to his pocket and I'm like what the fuck you got like what the fuck you got he was like you better shut the fuck up my neighbor's gonna hear you and I was like dude I'm not here for any of this I'm not here for any of this and he was like but you selling it on motherfucking Adam for Adam you selling it on Adam for Adam why I can't get none and I was like but you gonna be my boss dumbass I'm so stupid he was like dude dude you selling this shit on um Adam for Adam and I'm like, so what do you want me to do? He was like, you going to take this dick? I said, nah, I ain't for taking no dick. I ain't taking no dick, man. I ain't taking no dick. He was like, so what you going to do? What you going to do? What you going to do? I was like, man, I suck it a little bit. And he was like, okay, well, get down and suck it. And I just kind of like gave him two licks and a swirl because I wasn't, you know, I'm not, I'm not really feeling like, like really sucking no dick after like, I don't know what's in your back pocket, bitch. I'm in the middle of nowhere in Lafayette, Louisiana. It's dark as dumb fuck, okay? And you motherfucking, like, I'm feeling very vulnerable here. And I know I'm, like, kind of, like, making it comedic, but, comedic, but, bitch, I don't know how else to do it because, bitch, it was scarier than a motherfucker, and I was scared. I was, I mean, for real, for real, for a second, I was really scared, for real, because... I knew that my picture was all over the internet, prostituting, and if I came up missing, if I came up dead, all they was going to say to my mama was he was a prostitute. And at that time, I was getting so drunk that people really believed that I was on drugs and hard drugs before hard drugs was cool. And I wasn't, but that would have been my narrative. I had nothing else. I had uh, no platform. I had 
uh, no, you know, support system. I have friends, but I didn't have the support system I have now. Um, and so that would have been my narrative. And so all I could think of is like, I got to do something because sex workers ain't shit. But at the same time, I don't want to do this. Like, I don't want to do it. But I did it for a while. And then I was just like, I'd rather die running than die, um, than die like on my knees sucking this man dick. So I don't know where the strength came from or the direction because I'm not that good with direction. I got my ass up and I ran out this man's door screaming and hollering at the top of my lungs, just like I did with the guy when I was young. And he came out the same way that that happened when I was young. He said, get in my motherfucking car. I'm taking you to the hotel. And I don't know something in that. I don't know why I got in the car. I did. And he did take me to the hotel. Thank God. Because I don't know how I got there. And um, it was scary. But then the craziest part was he hit me up. He hit me up about, about two months later. It was just like, what's up? Text message to me. I'm like, dude, how dare you fucking hit me up? Like, dude, I'll call the police on you. <clears throat> and you know what this motherfucker had nerve enough to say? And do. He said, call the police on me. They're not going to arrest you. You're a sex worker and I have you in a video. I said, how dare, you know, how dare you record me doing something like that? He said, it looked consensual in the video. You are a sex worker. And he said, and I have all of your information, including your emergency contact, which happened to be my mama and her and her phone number and address. He said, I will forward this to your mother. And um, yeah, from then on, I said, you know, this sex working bullshit ain't for me. And I have to take greater pride in my body. Um, but yeah, so anyway, I said all that to say um, I'm really appreciative of this hashtag why I didn't report um, trend um, that's going on. Um, I appreciate everybody for being vulnerable. Uh, I invite you to share this um, this podcast episode with your hashtag why I didn't report story. Um, and I hope this was, in, you know, informative. And I hope it also showed, like, my vulnerable side. Because a lot of times I'm, like, super silly or super insightful. But I hope this showed my vulnerable side. And um, I hope that you fucking rate us um, five stars and leave a fucking comment. Even if it's your fucking comment of why you didn't report. Um, so, love y'all. This motherfucking box is closed.